Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman. And in the house, we got Peyton. Ursie's in the house and uh, he is uh, he's going to talk about some interesting stuff, stuff that's been developing and something that happened. And we talked about it about a year ago on our podcast show. And, and we're going to retouch on that and see how things have progressed and, and maybe if he has some more insight on if you happen to have a conflict with someone on the water. <laughs> so, Peyton, let's start it. Let's start. Let's um, start on what happened. It was it was uh, in the summer of 2021, I believe, yeah. or in the fall. <clears throat> yeah, the fall of October. Yeah, right when the water started cooling down. Right. I went right back to fishing boat docks. Yeah, fishing boat docks on Beaver Lake. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how that, that's pretty good fishing, <clears throat> though, that time of year, right? Oh, man, For yeah. crappie. As soon as the water cools back down, it's... Uh, that's what I go to. Yeah. So so tell us a little bit in case they don't know about it. You had a little conflict with the boat owner. Yeah, the first day I was up in uh, uh, around Montanay. Right. And uh, I was pulled up to a dock, and they were just stacked. Uh-huh. Uh, I was just catching one after another. And here come the guy down the hill in the golf cart. He got all mad. Get away from my dog. He's my fish, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I kind of got into it with him a little bit and told him that I, I have the right to fish here and this and that. and. And then I, I just finally decided to left there and went down here to War Eagle side and pulled up to a dock, and it, it was loaded, too, and we was catching them left and right. And uh, that's when old, that old man come down, and it got pretty heated from there. <laughs> got pretty <laughs> to, heated. Told me I had the whole lake to fish. Why well, do I have to fish right here? And I'm Because I just got told up there I can't fish there, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I couldn't get away from them that day. I have the worst luck. <laughs> yeah, the drama, worst. drama finds me everywhere in life. It doesn't help that you got a great big boat. Yeah. You know, and it, it's kind of <laughs> obvious, yeah. like, who you are. But tell us a little bit about, you've probably done some studying. you probably learned a lot about that situation. That's that's the whole point of us coming back and doing it is, is we want to visit about uh, what you should do if you're in that situation and, and how you should handle it and this kind of gives us the look. The it, hindsight's twenty twenty, right. so we're going to take that that hindsight and, and use that. I'll, right. I'll save people a bunch of research since I uh, started dock shooting probably about oh seven. Uh huh. And I started doing research then, you know, because I was seeing people getting on other people's docks and stuff and fishing. I'm like, I wonder if you can do that or not. Right. So I did all the research. I, you know, I called the corps and I called right. the, the sheriff's office, and they're like, No, that's trespassing. You can fish anywhere around them. You can shoot under them. As you can even you touch them with your boat. You just cannot step foot on them. Okay. Um, that docks are on public water. Um, the fish under them are for the public. The people that own the docks do not own the water or the fish or anything underneath it. So, I mean, it's it's fair game. And that's on uh, Corps of Engineer Lake. So, yes. they're, in your reservoir, might be different to... Uh, but you should probably check local regu- yeah, regulations. Check. But we're talking about um, like core lakes, and they're probably about all the same yeah. in general. So. Yeah, mostly. I think there's only a few lakes around the, the country that has different rules. But right. most of the time, if it's public water, it's fair game. And in general, when you're shooting docks for crappie, you're trying to stay a little bit away from them, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to bump them or or wash them with the prop or nothing like that i don't want to really know i'm there until i get about four or five out right then they get on to you a little bit but but uh you know if people come down and you have to deal with them i mean just you just i just stayed off the obvious that you know who you are and i'm in the right to fish here you know this you know i'm right. just dog shooting i'm not trying to hurt nothing and kind of what's been the feedback like since it's been a while you've probably got some feedback from people i, I think since it kind of went viral around here, everybody right. kind of knows who I am. So I haven't been messed with since. So right. I've had doc owners come down there like, oh, I know you. <laughs> right. So they're just like, have a good day, you know. And I'm like, yeah, I try to be respectful. You know, I don't get on their dock. I mean, you know, if you right. accidentally hook something, hopefully it falls off in the water, you know. But it's going to happen. If you're shooting docks, you're going to hook on a chain or right. or a, one of those airlines. But it, with a little low video hook, it don't hurt them. It'll just snap off and then fall down in the water. Right. So that's just that's just part of it. But other than that, just try to be nice and until it's time not to be nice. Then if they want to call law, you just tell them to call them. I'll wait. Right. So and then they'll get an education. I mean, right. that's that's what this world is about now is now these educations. So 
<laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, you just get educated, and then hopefully you won't have a problem with that person anymore. And and the feedback you you've gotten. I, I, mean, I had I had positive and a lot of negative from that whole thing. Right. A lot of people said I was just picking on an old man. And it seemed like after that, you know, more videos came out. I started seeing more, even with the professional bass anglers, you know, they uh-huh. they were having problems. And they handled it till it was, you know, nice until it was time not to be nice. Right. So, but, yeah, you get positive. I got positive and negative feedback from it, but more positive. Let's so. talk a little bit about shooting docks. Can you do it in the wintertime? We're talking about it. It's snowing but in right the background now, here. Right now is uh, the best time to be out there. Water temps, 42 degrees. Yeah, there's, they'll be stacked underneath them. And that's why, you know, people think that summertime is the best time to shoot docks, but not on our right. lake because that's when everybody's on their docks. The uh-huh. ski boats are running, making all that noise, and them fish just, they go deep and they're not there. Right. But the wintertime, it's quiet. It's got shade, bait fish. So they stack up on them. I'm talking five to probably two thousand. If you shine your scope underneath it, right? It's just it just lights up like Christmas tree. Yeah. So so let's talk a little bit about presentation. How you're going to catch those fish on docks and shooting docks? Uh, how are you how are you getting your boat in the right spot to do it? What's the right spot to you know shoot a dock? I, I try to position my boat uh, outside of the wind where it's not pushing me into it. Because uh-huh. obviously, if you got a nice boat, you don't want it all scratched up and banged up. Right. Um, but I try to find those fish in the darkest spot, and I target them with a 16th ounce jig head and a baby shad bait. So, yeah, a I big, do. a big long rod or a short I rod. What do you think? B and M Sharpshooter Six. Okay, it's, it's my favorite pole to use. Um, it's got backbone, and I can shoot 30 feet with it, no problem. Wow. And. Uh, I'll shoot it in there, and I'll set my bear real quick because a lot of times in the wintertime, them fish are shallow. So right. as soon as it hits the water, one of them crappie will grab it. It's just a reaction bite, uh-huh. and they'll fight over it. And then if I stop getting bites that way, I'll go a little slower, or I'll let it sink a little more, uh-huh. and then I'll retrieve a little faster each time just to try to change it up. And usually you can get four to five off a dock, and then they're on to you. Right. And then you can switch colors a couple times, pick up a few more. But the way that I fish is I, I, I go. I fish. I catch what a few that I can, then I'm gone. Right. I'll go to the next one. So the time you're done fishing, what twenty or thirty docks? You, I mean, you're obviously already done by then with a the limit, or you can go back and fish them all again and pick up what you need. Right. So, so they get kind of smart. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I think black crappie are a lot smarter than oh. white crappie on this lake. Right. So it, it seems sure seems to be that way. And it will they. There'll be a period of time when you're bringing it back, kind of look like a spinnerbait bite, kind of like if you're a bass fisherman, like oh, yeah, a spinnerbait bite it. where they come up and smack it. Yep, yep. Is that the greatest bite? Oh, or it's fun. Maybe. Especially yeah. if it's a big one. Right. You know, they thump it, and you set the hook, and you're like, oh, it's pulling back. So, you you know, you catch a lot of big black crappie that way. And walleye. So, walleye? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When a walleye gets on, you're just like feeding it line. Please, please stay on. Because <laughs> you see that golden tail come up. You're like, oh, boy. <laughs> so... <laughs> So when people are looking at their their live scope and they're seeing the fish that are on uh, the brush that's underneath the dock and they're all stacked up, but then they, they stack up, but they don't go to the top. Let's say they're five foot down, mm-hmm. but they're all over. Like you can see, and some of them are big, you know, they're, the echoes are pretty big. Yep. How, how are you reaching those? Do you try to use a long pole ever or do you always I, shoot I, I don't I don't use a long pole ever because... If I stick it in there, I always break the tips off or something. I'll smack the top of the dock, so I right. I quit doing that. You know, if they're also shallow in the water column at that depth, I'll uh, use a slip bobber, a fill slip bobber, uh-huh. on an old pencil sharper with a five foot pole, and I'll just right. I'll just back cast it in there between the dock and one of the say boat floats. Right. And once it gets back there, it'll it'll that jig will drop to a certain depth, and I just work it slowly through there, and that'll help me get a lot of those bigger bites. They'll come up, and that old right. bobber just will slowly pull down. That's exciting when it does that. So that's right. another way to catch them. But other than that, mostly I shoot them. Right. I just get it back there where they're where they're at and retrieve it several different ways. Are you using monofilament on that? On I that use sharp uh, shooter. Yep, I use Berkeley Low Vis Green six pound test. Uh huh. So when people go with you, you supply the rods. Then? Every, yeah, everything. Okay. We use a lot so of jigs if we dock shoot too. Use a lot. Don't of don't jigs. use a cheap jig head. They got several makers that make them but right. you'll go through if you fish like i do you you might go through 50 or 100 a day right because them fish are going to be where you can't hardly get to them but you've got to get to them uh-huh. so 
But usually in you know late winter and stuff, they'll they'll come out a little bit. So it's sometimes it's easier to get to them. But are they less likely to be in the brush that and and lay downs that are next to the dock they, too? As you they can be as you but go. Since live scope, I have also figured out that them fish will all of a sudden just leave in a school. Uh-huh. Make a big circle, and once they leave in the school, yeah. I can go chase them out in the open. Uh-huh. And then they'll make a big circle, and they'll come right back to their dock. And I'll catch another one, and they'll take off again. Uh-huh. Make a big old circle, and I'll, I'll go through. I'll catch them as they're, they're swimming out. And then sometimes they'll they'll go over to that stick up or whatever it's laying there, and they'll stop for a minute. Right. You can throw in there a few times, but it's fun when they do that. It's fun when they keep coming back because they're that's kind of like a rabbit. Yeah. If you ever went rabbit hunting, right. they they go in a circle. So if you have one person waits for them, yeah. they just come right back. And you know, dock shooting's getting better again because. Everybody has went to chasing roamers with live scope. Uh-huh. They're out fishing brush piles. So the dock crappie have been left alone for like two years. Right. And the numbers have just bumped. They've bumped back up. Right. And it's, you know, like I said, you pull up to a dock and there's two or three hundred underneath it sometimes. How and much? It, it doesn't have to have structure either. They, oh. could, they could just be in the shade or underneath certain floats. Uh-huh. Uh, the cables that come down to anchor them. Right. Stack up all the way up them. So, I've been catching some off the cables. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. But they seem to be big ones that sit on those cables for some reason. It seems like in the wintertime, the bigger black crappie come up. Uh-huh. They come up and they stack up on docks. Yeah. How but much you, How much longer is that going to last? How, are all we going to get until the end of February? All, all the, no, it, it'll be good all the way till April. Because oh, a, a lot of them fish will stage on that dock and they'll spawn behind it. Uh-huh. You know, in our black crappie, they'll spawn at 55. So I'll find, right. I can find them behind the docks at 55 degrees. We better get a little more water. There won't be much behind no, the dock. Little. Behind the dock, when when we're eight foot below a uh, right. flood flood uh, conservation pool, and so that doesn't it means it's low, but it's it's not the lowest it's ever been. So I guess it's it, not any panic. It'll be good pea gravel for them. That's yeah, all that's they'll right. have. <laughs> that's <laughs> So what else can you tell us a little bit about uh, crappie fishing or something that's going on? I know that uh, there's um, they're going to do some stuff that you you helped work on or get get started was uh, uh, the courtesy dock and a fish cleaning station. Yeah, stuff I've I've almost begged and pleaded for for a while, I right? Would say, or annoyed them, right? <laughs> to the point they had to listen. Yeah, because we needed a dock over here at the four twelve ramp. Right. Sure, because, you know, they, they brought all the rock in to help everything get wa- washed, and they fixed the right. parking lot. But it's hard to launch there. I mean, we've tore boats up and, you know, sprained ankles and broke legs. and It just goes from big rock to mud. To mud. Like, you, there's no pea gravel, yeah. really, yeah. to to get up and down on there. So Yeah, when you get when you get stuck in the mud, you're like, okay, it's time. It's time for something. Yeah, that's <laughs> that ramp is actually the Arkansas Game and Fish ramp yes. that's over there. So that they're the ones that um, actually own the, they own or maybe co-own the property with the Corps of Engineers, and so it's a little bit different than some of the other ramps that are on the lake that are not controlled by uh, the Corps of Engineers or the Corps of Engineers didn't like they do the courtesy docks there. So right. And so a courtesy dock there will be good. It'll be amazing. That'll help. It, yes. I, then, I can't wait. They're going to have to make a little bit bigger parking lot. Well, they need to. All they the parking need to lots right now. need to be bigger, but I don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, that dock's going to – it's going to be a game changer for sure. Right. Helping us load and unload faster, and it's it'll be great. Yeah. I'm glad it's coming. I'm very thankful. And then fish cleaning stations, which is important because – can you, and it's always a question, I'm sure you've already asked the game and fish, can you clean your fish and throw them in the lake? <laughs> <laughs> your cleaned fish. It, 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 you'll, get, you'll get that, you get two or three stories, depends on who you ask. Uh huh. So, I mean, I know a lot of guys, they throw their stuff at the end of the dock, but they, they want you to uh, put it in bags and put it in the trash. I mean, that's, right. that's, that's, that's what I've heard, but... Um, I think it's good for the lake with the fish go back in, honestly. Right. My, my, my opinion. Crawdads, but, everything, oh, minnows have yeah. something to eat. Well, you think of, think of salmon in Alaska. That All they talk about is how the dead salmon help, you know, right. new, or uh, fertilize the ecosystem. I mean, I think that's the same here, you know. I think they need to go back and <laughs> do their thing. But 
the uh, cleaning station is going to be at Hickory Creek. Right. Uh, the core ramp. Uh, the core approved it. They're going to put it in a grinder system. Oh, good. Um, it'll be one of the really nice cleaning stations. Uh, it, but it'll grind into a septic tank. Oh, wow. It'll have its own septic tank. Really? And, yeah, and that's where the ground up fish will decompose. Uh-huh. So... Well, that's good. Will it have a cover to it yeah, or not? It's supposed oh, to be. It's, it's to? supposed to be lit with water, um, lights, you know, or well, lit lights, and right. uh, the, the grinder system, and then Teflon tables all the way around it. Wow! So, concrete pad. That's the, pretty nice. And the course said, uh, the course said they'd maintain it for us. So, that's a huge plus. Right. So, well, that's good. The main thing is keeping people from throwing pop cans down it just to hear it grind them up. That's, right. That's always been an issue is what John Stein told me. Oh, okay. People throw trash in it. And yeah, we don't want people to. No. Then, I told them if I got somebody mistreating it, I'm going to tell them about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it. Worked hard for this. That's right. And then maybe a little bit later on they can get one down there at 412. Yeah. And that would be nice. That would be the, probably the two biggest you know, places where people crappie fish on the lake. Yes. I'd say the majority of people crappie fish down in uh, River Arms or in the middle part of the lake, you know, Montanay and down probably is. Yeah, I think if they extended they... that parking lot, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and put one there. Yeah. Sure. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it'd be a good place for it. So there you it go. Just be cleaner so that everybody doing it on the back of their truck beds, you know, like we've been having to do for so right. long. So it's just, you know. One little area to go and socialize and clean it up. That's right. Yeah. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. That takes us to Tackle Time. Tackle Time is sponsored by Pico Lures. Pico Lures has a complete line of hard and soft baits. If you're going to chase after those walleyes, Pico Lures got everything you need to go catch them. They got fishing line too, braid, mono. So check them out at picolures.com. Peyton, if they want to find out more, go out on a guide trip with you. Maybe shoot some docks. Yeah, that's a good way to learn. <laughs> I'll teach you the ins and outs. <laughs> Where would they get hold of you? Uh, Peyton Nursery Fishing. Okay. I'm on Facebook. So. All right. Check them out there, and uh, we appreciate you being on the show. Like how we always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hook sharp. Lures in the water. <laughs>